Hey, Aaron, how you doing? I'm doing great. Surviving the quarantine. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing well. How uh, I'm here on the uh, the Beyond the Tap set at the studio. Uh, where where are you at? I'm coming to you from Wagner, Oklahoma, specifically the uh, animal clinic of Wagner. It's my dad's vet clinic. It's a great example of a small business that's making adjustments to get through this. Come on in, Dad. This is Dr. Peters. we got a little rabbit here that is in for a neuter. You don't think about rabbits. You think about dogs and cats getting spayed and neutered, but these rabbits need that too. And, you know, it's a lot, a lot has changed for vet clinics. They have to do it through the drive through so we're good with the rabbit, Dad. But it's a it's a great example of just making adjustments and getting creative. And I know a lot of businesses in Northwest Arkansas are doing the same, Zach. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, supporting small business is important year round. But you know, I think right now we're finding that it's it's more important than ever to than to be out, uh, support your small business, whether that be buying gift cards or ordering online um, for those that can, or ordering takeout. And so, you know, here at Northwest Arkansas Live, that's our purpose year round is supporting small business. And so uh, we're going to continue to do that during this pandemic. And obviously we can't be out creating content the way we typically do filming in people's businesses and in their restaurants, uh, even in their homes sometimes, right? Or on the golf course with them. That's difficult now. Um, and so what we're going to do is, is start looking at the things we've already shot, the businesses we've already visited, the local businesses that, you know, have already been on our show. Those are the ones right now that really need the hand and really need help. Um, and need to get their message out of how they're serving the community. And so we're going to be setting up online interviews and uh, online Skype chats and Zoom calls um, with you and some of our other hosts, with those local chefs, those local business owners, um, talking about what they're doing, how they're serving the community, and how they're stepping up to the plate um, to continue to run their business. And so uh, that's kind of our plan moving forward. Yeah, and that that's, fits perfectly with us because that gives us extra passion for this because that's – the businesses that we've been featuring on our show are the local small businesses that really need help right now. I've noticed that it's those businesses that are getting extra creative to survive, and I can't wait to do our small part to try and help, Zach. Absolutely. I think everybody's pivoting, and, and we're going to do our part to do the same. So um, we'll be scheduling interviews for you, and, and be ready. All right. I'm going to go play with some rabbits and some other animals, so I'll see you later. Presented by Nunnally Chevrolet, the driving force of Northwest Arkansas. You know, we've done a lot of stories that are out of sight, but I wanted to do one that was out of this world. Today, we are in Springdale, Arkansas at Explore Scientific to learn more about a company that I bet you didn't even know was here. Our show features local businesses that interest us, that maybe people don't know are in our Northwest Arkansas area. So really fascinated to learn more about your story, Scott. And so really what got you started in optics? Oh, cool. Well, it's, I'm glad you guys came in here. My interest in optics start when I'm really young. I'm uh, probably eight, nine years old, and it's the Apollo program. You know, and when JFK said, you know, by the end uh, of the decade, uh, yeah, by the end of the decade, you know, so it's it's the early 60s and we're going to the end of the decade. You know, we have it. We just learned how to get rockets up into the sky without exploding. OK, we're supposed to put a human and now in we're going to put a human and walk around on the moon. Right. A lot of people thought that JFK was nuts. OK, I'm living in Texas as a kid during this time. OK. And I remember any time that there was something about space, the Apollo program or whatever, you know, they're letting kids out. We're watching on a black and white TV. It's rolled out in the hallway and uh, we're transfixed. We're learning every aspect of the Apollo program. It became a national pastime. Yeah, absolutely. A and passion. Then, yeah. And then young Scott got enamored by that? Or? Yeah, like me and a zillion other kids, you know. <laughs> so I am begging for my parents for a telescope, okay, because I want to see the moon and everything. I watch uh, Buzz Aldrin and, and Neil Armstrong land on the moon, walk on the moon and stuff. By this time, I, I am hounding my parents like crazy to have a telescope. They yield, finally, and they buy me a very small 
telescope from Kmart. I still have it. Wow. Okay. But my parents were really cool too because they would let me tear things apart. Okay, so I tore all my sister's toys apart, rebuilt them, tore my t toys apart, rebuilt them. The telescope was really cool because I was taking the lenses out, the eyepieces out, and I'm seeing how these things work, you know, and I'm learning how a telescope actually works at that time. I really kind of honor my parents uh, by, um, in a couple of ways. One of them is uh, with my telescope that I keep on my desk. And the your other first one is, telescope, yeah, your very first right. one. Cool. And uh, my parents travel around a lot. You know, I'm a military brat, so uh, I'd always wanted to have a uh, a trailer, you know, an Airstream trailer. And so I got one of those, and that's named after my mom. You know, I'm like one of those guys that never wanted to have a real job, right? <laughs> I wanted to have something. <laughs> that I was passionate about. I decided that at 12 years old, you know. And then how did it, you know, kind of domino effect from there? I just uh, was really enamored with optics. I started a hobby in photography that turned into a profession by the time I'm 15. And, um, but only five years later, uh, I'm get, getting reintroduced to astronomy. Uh, so 1980, is rolling around, I'm 20 years old. Almost immediately, I run into people, because now I'm using big telescopes and I'm selling them in my store, and I'm meeting people from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, from Palomar Observatory. I start to meet astronauts and stuff like that. And I'm going, what an unbelievable community. I mean, what other community could you get involved with where you're gonna meet explorers, discoverers, you know, as someone with no formal education in this, right. okay? So uh, I'm in the right place, the right time. Uh, we, because I, I'm selling more and more telescopes, it's attracting this audience that is just amazing to me. So today, I mean, I know people like Buzz Aldrin, okay? He owns one of our telescopes. Uh, I work with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory as a volunteer, okay? Um, I, you know, I'm surrounded by optics all day long, and I get to talk to discoverers and explorers at different levels every yeah. day. It's awesome. I always had this thing in the back of my head that I wanted to have my own business. And, and actually so, manufacture your own telescopes? Anything, you know, just that it had to be my business. Right. It was just a promise I'd made to myself that I thought I should do this uh, uh, for myself. I should do this to work out my ideas and my designs and to work into the community in the way that I want to. Yeah. And so that's, that's the genesis of Explore Scientific, which I started in 2008. The brand Explore Scientific is a brand I came up with. You know, I wanted the company's name to be what it does. We're, we're a licensee for National Geographic, uh, PBS, Discovery, um, and uh, we have sold telescopes all over the world. I'm Gan Nunley at George Nunley Chevrolet in Bentonville. For over 30 years, our family-owned dealership has helped our community find new roads and new trails to the amazing places that make Northwest Arkansas the greatest place on earth. And now, in cooperation with Bike NWA, Nunley Chevrolet has created an exclusive edition of Austrail's pickups and SUVs for the cyclist and outdoor enthusiast. There's never been a better time to enjoy the incredible Ozark Playground. Check out Nunley's all-new Austrail's edition exclusively at JustTryMe.com or come by our dealership in Bentonville to find out more.
So we've talked a lot about space. We've talked yep. a lot about your passion for that, which is what you got into this telescopes, but microscopes, rifle scopes, yep. all sorts of optics yep. that you have morphed into and that you are expert in now. So talk to us about the different arms of your business. Okay. Well, we are diversified like that. The core of our business is astronomy and telescopes. We probably sold four or five million telescopes wow. since I started the company. Okay. We have little telescopes itself for, you know, 50, 60 bucks, all the way up to models that go up for thousands of dollars, you know, over $10,000, some of them. So there's a telescope for everybody. Um, microscopes is an important part of our business because that's looking the other way, right? Instead of looking out into space, but it's all about exp exploration and, and uh, kind of self-discovery. So people can have this moment of personal discovery and exploration in their own backyards, mm -hmm. you know. Or with a microscope in your own bedroom. In your own office, bedroom, exactly. Out in, you know, your deer hunting. Deer hunting, um, that's another way, you know, uh, I'm not a hunter myself, but we have people on our team who are expert hunters. And, binoculars. Uh, binoculars, right. But this is a perfect, kind of a perfect storm for you because there is a ton of outdoor stuff in Northwest Arkansas. That's right. Binoculars, rifle scopes for sure. Um, and that's another reason why I'm here, yeah. you know, because uh, this area, uh, you have people that go outside more, mm -hmm. okay, in general, okay, they love hiking and camping and hunting and, you know, it, there, there's a culture of that here. Let me talk about emotions for a minute. You're finally doing what you always dreamed to do. Yeah. Few people can really actually say that and mean it. Mm. So talk about that a little bit. And then how gratifying is it to see a young person or any amateur come in, grab a telescope and get that excitement to go and do some exploring of their own. Mm -hmm. Those two things have to really uh, mean more than any monetary value. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because that's probably the most important part of it. Uh, having your own business is a roller coaster ride. Okay, that's not for everybody, I know. The reward of it though, is when you see uh, the good that your products have done. And in astronomy, I think that the way it opens people's minds, that it encourages them to go and study harder uh, or to get excited about science, okay? Because they had this experience of seeing Saturn's rings for themselves live. And they saw, uh, they saw an exploded star in another galaxy and they saw a comet Okay, and they go, wow, my life is not on this, in my neighborhood, okay? It's not on this little ball called Earth, okay? It's not even just our solar system. And it starts to sink in that you're seeing the light, the fossil light of a galaxy millions of light years away. And it's not, this light is not a copy. This is not a reflection. These are, these are photons made in those stars that took off millions of years ago, traveling across space, and now some of them are being funneled through the telescope and actually hitting the retina of your eye. The real, actual, not copies, but the real photons made in those stars. Wow. Okay? And, it, and you can see it. You see, there's like this tipping point. They realize, whoa, I'm having a connection. You'd be surprised how good even a small telescope is. I mean, I have- If you know how to use it. If you know how to use yeah. it, right? That's the secret, so, you know, Kinda but- like golf uh, clubs, they're good if you know how to use them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and a, and a great golfer can actually use a pretty bad set of golf clubs and that's hit a good right. game, that's right? That's right, that's right. But it seems, uh, it seems like a uh, undertapped hobby in this area. Um, right. You know, it seems like it could do a lot of growing in terms of a local hobby. Right. For Northwest Arkansas. It is growing, it is growing. Uh, a few years ago, Explore Scientific gave away uh, telescopes and microscopes to every school in the Springdale School District. Wow. Okay, so everybody got telescopes. That started a, uh, that inspired some science teachers, uh, uh, both at Northwest Arkansas Community College, I think there's people also at, uh, uh, you know, University of Arkansas. And we have formed an organization uh, called NWA Space. Uh, the leader of that is Catherine Ald. Uh, Catherine Ald is a professor at NWAC and she saw a uh, opportunity to get a 24 inch historic refractor. Okay, and this is the long telescopes. So she got a 30 foot long, 50,000 pound telescope donated 
to NWA space, okay? And it's in storage right now, but we are at the point where we're, we're ready to do fundraising to get, Set up. get it built. Yeah, so they'll have a planetarium, a telescope like that. And so, um, you know, I see it as being a perfect uh, dovetail to some of the other community things that are going on, like the Amazium and the Crystal Bridges and, you know, other, you know, the Momentary, which is starting up, you know? So yeah. a program like this, where you can go and look through a massive telescope like that, be in a huge planetarium, get hands-on with science and stuff, I think will inspire a lot of young people and families. Yeah. The Chevy Silverado family of pickups is a diverse line of trucks, perfect for any job. And right now, Nunley Chevrolet has more trucks and options than any other dealer in Northwest Arkansas. And with our huge selection come big discounts. Save thousands on select Silverados, our biggest selection and savings ever. We're your Silverado superstore with row after row of new 2019 and 2020 models. Go to JustTryMe.com to see more discounts and special offers. Find new roads to Nunley Chevrolet, your Silverado superstore. Okay, and we're back from break. Uh, Scott, welcome. Thank you very much, Joel. It's nice to be back with you guys. Yeah, Scott Roberts, of course, the owner and founder of Explore Scientific. You're at the headquarters, the world headquarters right here in Springdale, Arkansas. Um, how are you holding up during this quarantine, you and your business, Scott? Well, I can tell you it's different uh, for sure. We're, we're running a skeleton crew here at Explore Scientific. Uh, it means that we're still operating. Um, our store's not open, uh, but we have had people buy stuff and we put stuff out in the front stoop out there to have people pick it up so that you can do that if you'd like, if you want to get something from us here in uh, Springdale. But um, otherwise, we're still shipping um, all over the country and, um, uh, you know, we've been able to keep that going. So, yeah. Uh, Joel and I were talking about um, when we had, had our trip to, to explore scientific for our broadcast story, um, you know, how much we talked about the moon landing and what an impact it had on our country. Oh, yeah. And it was just so fascinating to me that you were, you know, played at least a small part in that and know those guys. I've talked to those guys. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of the quarantine, so coincidental to what we're going through now because when those moonwalkers got back from that first trip to the moon, I want you to tell us a story about their quarantine, the airstream. Uh, you know, John F. Kennedy said in uh, 62 or 63, um, you know, that we're gonna put a, uh, a man on the moon before the end of the decade. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. You know, and just, I mean, literally just a few from going from scratch, almost from scratch, okay? Yeah, Warner Von Braun working on giant rockets and all the rest of it, but basically getting the money released, 
uh, and then starting to build those things and then firing off those Saturn V rocket engines for the test. That was the convincer for JFK, all right? Uh, and then and then we have the, the test flights. We have the, unfortunately, the uh, tragedy on, on the, on the ground, you know, before the launch uh, with uh, Gus Grissom and you know, that team. That were that were caught in that fire inside the capsule, but uh, uh, that was the only uh, you know that they were the only uh, fatalities in the whole program. Uh, um, but uh, uh, John C. Stonecipher was uh, a guy that was uh, headed up the recovery mission itself, and and that uh, so you had the you had the takeoff, super dangerous. The landing on the moon, of course, still dangerous, very dangerous. Uh, and then the the recovery uh, mission itself, also uh, very dangerous because you got to get them back alive, you know. So um, the uh, uh, that team with the uh, people on the USS Hornet, the uh, Navy SEALs, the underwater demolition team that picked them up, uh, uh, you know. So you had the guys do the splashdown. They had to get inside of hazmat suits, okay? They get uh, pulled out um, uh, by uh, Terry Muhlenbach, who I got to meet. He was telling me what it was like to recover the the Apollo 11 astronauts. That's that's crazy. So you so they've gone through all these dangers. They've made it through the moon landing. They've made it all the way back. They finally splashed down. And then there's this other fear, right? And you said a little bit about it, about how they had to get into hazmat suits. What's going on with that? What were they? What were they freaking out about? They, you know, there was a, there was some thought. Uh, we had never been to the moon before, so there was some thought that there might be contagions on the moon that we didn't know about. You know, so they had to put them in quarantine. And in order to make the quarantine happen, you know, they have to pick them up out of the ocean. Uh, they have to carry them in a vessel of some sort, okay, before they can get them back on land, okay, uh, to a uh, to a larger quarantine facility. So uh, they called upon uh, uh, a company called Melpar, and Melpar was uh, uh, tasked with the responsibility of making the vessel that would be uh, where the astronauts would live, okay, for a period of days uh, until they could get them back on land. And so they contacted the Airstream company. Melpar made uh, the filtering systems to pressurize the, uh, the difference between the outside pressure and the inside pressure to keep contagions, con if there was any, contained inside the Airstream itself. So what's the model? Yeah, oh, the model, <laughs> okay. Well, this, this, is, this is a model of of uh, of my airstream, this is a 27 foot 1968 Overlander. Okay, that's amazing. And uh, you know, it's a 124 scale. Um, and so something similar to this was fitted for the astronauts to be quarantined in only temporarily while they were taken to the other quarantine site, right? Right. So you had the three astronauts in there, plus you had a guy that. Uh, was a was a, a physician you know they could have they had a they had a table up front here where all six of, you know there was six seats here but um they had a table that could double as a uh a, a, a platform for doing surgeries i mean they were they were prepared for anything that might go wrong okay and how long were they in the airstream en route to the big facility where they were quarantined for even longer it was 88 hours so, in, the, in the airstream, okay. In the airstream. So the airstream that they built had no wheels. It just had like a, uh, it looked like it was on a big aluminum pallet or something. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. I saw some images of that. It's crazy the conversion they did to it. And another thing that really stuck out to me about those images was once they got to the quarantine facility, the way they had to communicate with their families and wives through the glass, even with uh, President Nixon through the glass, and then one of the astronauts had his birthday and they had to do it through the glass because they were absolutely quarantined because of you know what they had termed was moon bugs which right. i think was also crazy 
Buzz told me that he was so happy to get into the Mission Quarantine Facility because there was so much more room. Okay, <laughs> literally shoulder to shoulder for a long time. Okay, so, uh, you know, during the entire mission. So, you know, in the Orion spacecraft, there's not a lot of room here. You know, I've seen no. that. I've seen that. It's crazy how compact they are. So this is a perfect time. Everybody's quarantined to, to buy, a, buy a telescope and get into it. I mean, it's a hobby that anybody can start on any budget. And that's something that I know you're passionate about is not only the hardcore, you know, mad scientists, so to speak, but you love beginners and getting them into it. Oh, absolutely. We have, I mean, everyone from children that are getting their first little telescope, like, like mine, you know, the, you know, I keep this little thing on my desk as a reminder of where I started. This was a little 40 millimeter. And the first thing I looked at, of course, was the moon. Um, but uh, uh, small telescopes get inspire people to explore more and it gets them involved in exploration. And once once that kind of starts and you really have some great experiences, you just don't want to stop. Scott, you're absolutely right. Thank you again. Um, it's great to hear about this because even when people can't go outside to explore, they can always look up and explore the skies. Thanks again, Scott, for joining us. So cool to talk to Scott, Joel, because Explore Scientific right here in Springdale, it's the world headquarters. Get, get online and check them out and learn more about what they do. Really cool company. So anyway, it's been great having you guys watching this week and we'll see you next time. We're dedicated to supporting higher education for real Arkansans, like Dave Ayante, who went to SAU on a lottery scholarship and is now an attorney, or Allison, pursuing a degree in nursing from ASU, and Stephanie, who graduated from the Brightwater Culinary Program and now owns her own bakery. And those are just three of more than 275,000 scholarships the lottery has helped fund so far. You could be next. Apply now at scholarships.adhe.edu. This is winning. Well, first of all, before we go any farther, let's get a beer. Let's get a beer. Come on. Like, we're just like, all right. Oh. What is your most embarrassing drinking story? <laughs> I'm really happy to have friends that are making beers. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on another adventure with Northwest Arkansas Alive. Our region is full of excitement and opportunities that demonstrate why this is one of the fastest growing areas in the nation and the best place to be. We want to remind you that you can watch this episode and all of our previous episodes anywhere, anytime at nwaalive.com. And of course, we hope you'll join us next time as we pursue the people, places, and events that truly make Northwest Arkansas alive. Ah, you got my nose in that one. Hey, if you liked that episode, and I know you did, do you know we have a YouTube page? That's where you can watch our show on your phone, your smart TV, any place. So make sure and subscribe on YouTube. And what about your favorite episode? Tell us about it on Instagram or Facebook, and don't forget to share it with your friends. Also, smash that like button.